Okay, so right now there's a lot going on, right? COVID cases are on the rise. That devastating earthquake in Haiti, the instability and humanitarian crisis unfolding in Afghanistan, all of that on top of the day-to-day -day stress of life, right? Your kids are going back to school, the economy is still bad, you might need a job. It's a lot. <sighs> Friend, are you taking care of your mental health? Are you checking on your well-being? Do you know where you can go to ask for help if you need it? Joining us now is Dr. Ricardo White. You might remember, he's been with us before, Medical Director of Psychiatric Health at Community Hospital of San Bernardino. He's a local fellow, so he can talk to us about some of these local things and local times. Um, Dr. White, we put out the call to you because we were feeling it, right? The headlines, whew, the headlines are, are rough. There's a lot of unrest and a lot of instability in the world, and it can feel overwhelming. Thank you so much for having me back, Michaela. Thank you so much for being sensitive to this issue and doing something for your viewers. We got to talk about it, right? You know, we have to talk about the fact that, you know, you don't want to live buried with your head in the sand. You need to know what's going on in the world. But the headlines of late have been really dire, especially if you have a connection or just have a heart for what's going on in Afghanistan, right? You look at what's going on in Haiti and that can get overwhelming. How do you counsel people to not let the weight of the world crush you? Well, I can't tell you how therapeutic clarity can be. Hmm. So in moments where you know, you're traumatized, a big part of the trauma is confusion. And if you can move towards clarity, that can help you start decreasing the stress. So you take a breather, you, know, okay. you take a nice deep breath in, you breathe it out, then you take it issue by issue. You know, as, as you look at the, the problems that are, uh, that are occurring over in Afghanistan and you think about the stress that our veterans and, and our military must be going through, hey, what contribution could I make um, right. to right. one of the, the military people coming home? What, who do I know that maybe I can reach out to and provide some support? You, you look at the tragedy in Haiti and you say, hey, maybe there's a cause that I can make a donation to. But the bottom line is you can take the energy and the angst mm -hmm. and you can mobilize and do something with it. And then at least you can get that sense that, hey, I'm doing what I can. Because and I, I think you made a good wrong. point. When you feel helpless, that's what leads to despondency, right? Right. It, it, it can, like, when, when we talk about worry, for example, the equivalent of worrying is stepping on the accelerator and stepping on the brake at the same time. <laughs> oh, no, and, Doc. And we know you, how oh, good goodness. That, that, that resonates with me. That doesn't you know, do anything. It revs the engine, but keeps you still. <gasps> Move backwards or move forwards, but don't try to do both. Wow. And that's the essence of worrying. There's no point in worrying. It's analyzing, it's thinking, it's coming to a decision, and it's putting action um, beside uh, an action to what you've decided. Because that I remember what, telling somebody something about that and saying, you can't worry, it does no good. And their response to me was, well, then it, it, I don't care and I must care because that's true. We are empathetic beings. We care, right? We hope we care about each other and even fellow citizens of the world. So this is how we can show we care instead of just dizzying ourselves in a, in a sense of anxiety, we can take action. Yeah, it doesn't help anyone just sitting there um, worrying. Um, so you, you, you've heard it said, you know, who by worrying has added an inch to their height? You know, that, <laughs> that kind of thing. No, but, but if you make a decision one way or another, that actually helps, you know, someone. And I suppose also knowing where you can talk about your worries and concerns safely is a good thing. Somebody pointed out to me that they got great relief out of talking to their elders who reminded them that there have been other times in our recent history when things have looked like they were falling apart in the world. You think about, you know, when all of the, you know, the assassination of JFK, you think about the civil rights movement, you think about the early wars, the Vietnam War. There have been different eras in, in our history of the world when things have felt oppressive like this. Well, well, the elderly often have a wonderful ability to help us gain perspective, you know, and say, you know, why don't you calm down and it's interesting that calmness is often a wonderful birthplace to make a good decision, you know, because you might not be rushing, but it allows you to really think, scrutinize, and then take that, that step. Mm -hmm. That can be very anxiety, you know, reducing. But things like the suicide hotlines, these are things that, are, that can be such of a fantastic resources as they provide us 
with 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 trained um, experts uh, to help us get through very difficult moments. But you're correct. In our social lives, it can be really important for us to invest in sustaining relationships that can bring us through some of our difficult moments um, like that, Michaela. So fantastic question. And and I suppose there are are even you know. Uh, I know that I'm sensitive to content, right? And so I have to manage how I view and consume content in times of great anxiety like that. That is a wonderful example of what you can, can, do, can do from your control standpoint. What can you control? What can you not control? Um, so is it print media? Maybe that, that might be a better resource for you. Or is it, is it setting a limit to how much of the content that you need to expose yourself to um, that, that you can control? That is a beautiful example of clarifying to yourself, what can I control, what can I not? How much exposure brings me to that point where now I'm paralyzed and I don't feel like I can do anything and I'm revving the engine and stepping on the brake at the same time, mm -hmm. not good for the engine. Not good for yourself. Um, uh, there's probably a point where you recommend that folks talk to a professional. Uh, how do you suggest people go about doing that? Well, so you want to take a look at impaired function. So if, if your function is getting to that place where it's impaired or you're even worried about it, a lot of people can consult their insurance company. Um, but you want to know that your local county often have excellent mental health resources. That's they great. often have experts. Yeah, they often have experts that are very passionate about delivering high quality care. And that can also be a resource that you can reach out to. Yeah, absolutely. Because again, addressing it early on before it starts to compound and get worsen and 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 beyond your control and beyond your management. Um, Dr. Ricardo White, I believe that I said to you this is going to be an ongoing conversation and you've you've uh, proven us right and, and we'll we'll make good on that again. We'll have keep having these conversations. Our well being and our mental health is is of utmost importance to care for. Thank you for being here for us today. Thank you for having me. Love the green, Michaela. <laughs> Thank you. A nice eye for color. Uh, he's again the medical director and psychiatric health at uh, Community Hospital of San Bernardino. A nice local resource. Thank you, doctor.